there guys, welcome to Anthony Allen Edits YouTube channel, the YouTube channel that is all about your video editing hints, tips and tricks as well as things that I edit and show you how to edit those things and have a lot of fun with. Here in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about Final Cut Pro X. I will be walking you through the software from start to finish, teaching you how to import all the way how to do something such as chroma keying or 360 video, all the way from top to bottom. So this is a snippet from that huge episode that I will be doing over the next couple of uh, videos. Hopefully you find it interesting and uh, we'll be having more of these videos coming as well. So that's a good reason to subscribe. So without further ado, let's get into the video of Final Cut Pro X and showing you how to use the software from start to finish. Let's have a look. Hi guys. Okay, so here we are at my desktop. We're going to take you through this process of using Final Cut Pro X uh, from start to finish all. And we're going to actually begin in this episode with opening the software and starting a project and how to set up your project with Final Cut Pro X. This will also give you more knowledge on how to use editing platforms. Even if you're not using Final Cut Pro X, you will be able to gain some form of value when watching this video as you will learn a few things. So let's get into it. So to find Final Cut Pro X on a Mac, what you want to do is you want to go to the launch pad. From there, if it's not already showing like it is here, you can actually use the search function at the top. And we're gonna do that right now, just to uh, sort of get the launch pad to focus on the application that we want to use. So I've just typed in Final Cut, and it's already given me the icon for the application. We're gonna click it from here, and that should load up the software. When this is loading, you'll be able to see what version of Final Cut Pro X I am actually using. You can see it here, version 10.4, Point six, and that's the version of Final Cut Pro X we are using here in this video. Here it's trying to actually gather up other projects that I have created. As you can see it's telling you the date it's been modified and the location of where it's been saved as well as the library name. Now we're going to get into what a library actually is in this software in a moment but for now we're actually going to click cancel so we can start from a fresh plate and then what we want to do when, we've given, when we're given this blank workstation here is you want to click the green icon to maximize your window. So right now we've maximized our window. To get back up to the files tab and the rest of the tabs, you simply just hover your mouse at the top and it will give you the tabs at the top of the software. So what we want to do is we want to first begin our project. And the way we do this is we create a library. So what you want to do is you want to go to file new library as you can see there there was only a few options that we could use as there's nothing going on in the editing platform so far so i normally save it in my downloads folder and the reason why i do this is because my desktop is actually simultaneously uploading to the cloud so as soon as i've dragged something onto my desktop it is uploading it to the cloud in order to save me space so that when i'm editing i don't have to use the uh, space. I don't have to have a clogged up uh, uh, hard drive and therefore when I'm editing a big project it won't be taking up the majority of the space on my drive. So right now we're going to call this uh, tutorial. Tutorial 1 is what we will name the library. Now the library is not the same as the event. Uh, we'll get into what that means in a moment. So we're creating a library and a library is basically where everything that you create will be stored, including the project. So here, from here, what we're going to do is not import the media. We're going to create a project. You can actually import your media ready for your project. Your project will be your timeline and what's being edited. Your media is what you drag into your timeline to be edited. So in this example, what we're going to do, uh, because we're not getting into importing just yet here in this tutorial, is we're going to click New Project. Now, as you can see, it's given you the event in which the project is being saved to. The event is within your library. So here is your library tab here. Um, yeah, I actually have a plugin which try to which tr attempts to sort. I can't click it right now because we're actually doing a different action. But if I click that, this plugin is trying to sort my library into categories for example if I import a picture it will try to sort that picture into a pictures folder so I can easily select pictures if I'm using a picture within my video edit 
um, here you want to name your project so you want to name whatever scene you're creating here in this event um, you can do it either way or the other you can name the event uh, not a lot of people do as it's basically uh, giving you a date for the event and uh, it's within the tutorials uh, library so let's call this a scene scene one now before we actually press ok on this you actually have a few different types of settings and we're going to walk you through this step by step so to begin with you have your video format this is for example 1080p 720p and so forth this will determine the size of your overall video project and um, so for and it's actually given you the resolution of this as well actually so the resolution is the size of the video project and it's given you this in in uh, a space in here 720 12 1280 12, 720 and you could actually change this by doing the uh, changing the format to for example 1080p it will automatically give you the resolution for a 1080p video and at the end here you've actually got the frame rate of your video so if you're importing a piece of media which is 60 frames per second and then you are leaving your project at 23 frames per second what will happen is Final Cut Pro X will have to re-render uh, well work twice as hard to render the clip in order to make it fit a 23 frame per second when you're exporting and then if you're exporting in a different format you're, you're confusing the software and causing it to work harder than it should have to to avoid all this if you're using just one video clip and chopping it up or, or a, a various amount of video clips and they're all of the same video format what you would do is you would use the automatic settings this will automatically recognize the format size and frame rate of the clip or media you import uh, the first clip or media you import and then it will uh, format the rest of your project to that first clip the same size the same frame rate and so forth if you're using uh, multiple different video formats resolutions and frame rates this will of course uh, have to be uh, rendered and transcoded tra transcoded into the end result or for your timeline for example so try to keep this setting the same as what you would like to export your video at that is my best advice in this form of uh, starting your timeline that way you won't have to re-render everything when you come to export your finished project and that's the easiest way to do it as well but you can obviously do things like transform the media in order for it to fit this resolution and also uh, um, the, the the frame rate will by default have to be sorted during export but for now what we're going to do is actually actually before we go on I'm going to let you know about some more settings that are available so uh, we have 1080p 1080i HD 720p NTSC which is for American SD cards PAL SD which is for uh, West um, uh, UK uh, SD cards 2k 4k 5k and 360 now uh, I'll have to correct myself there when it says SD uh, because that can actually be used for televisions as well television setting uh, so as you already know Americans use NTSC and here in the UK we use PAL um, and that's also the same for your Xbox setting as well so if you're doing uh, uh, gaming footage you will notice that if you are importing and you have recorded directly from your Xbox it may be in PAL what you can also do is you can actually set this to custom so if you're setting something to custom if you want it to uh, fit a certain size and that size is not available uh, you can actually select custom and then you can actually input the resolution of your video and the projection type so for example if you're making a 360 video this would be how you would begin the uh, create the project and select your size of the resolution so if I select 360 monoscopic here it will give me 
well, it's not actually giving me a resolution to work. It's not automatically changing it. So it's keeping it to a 360 video format, but in the same resolution as the 1080p video which we selected beforehand. What you can also do is you can leave the projection type the way it is and you can change the codex which is the type of rendering of the clip. This is all going to sound very confusing to a beginner but if you actually take the time to understand uh, these settings it can be very helpful to you and save you a lot of time. So I'm trying to teach you from top to button professional video editing using Final Cut Pro X. So for now, for this example, what we're going to do is we're not going to go for the higher uh, um, resolutions and frame rates. We're actually go, go, going to go for <laughs> we should go for Goku. We're actually going to go for uh, 720p right now, and the frame rate uh, that we could actually go for is 29, uh, 29 uh, 0.97p which is the average frame rate for a YouTube video. Actually, before we actually click on OK, we're actually going to have a look at the rendering. So there are different type of rendering format that you can use with Final Cut Pro X. Most of these are Apple ProRes and you will be fine with most of these, but it can actually affect your final export. Now, I don't have a lot of knowledge in terms of rendering. Uh, but I do have a lot of knowledge in terms of rendering inside of a project. But what I normally do here is I leave it on Apple ProRes 422. And for this purpose, for the purpose of this video and not tampering with things too far, I would suggest leaving it on the same setting. So down below, also for beginners as well, you would like to set that at the normal setting that Final Cut Pro X is using until you might occur with, uh, run upon a problem. And with this rendering format and codex, I haven't had a problem as of yet. So down below, you also have the color space. We're not going to tamper with this and it hasn't given us the option, so we're not going to mess with it either. You can also change the audio channels from stereo to surround so if you're editing for surround sound and you want to do a lot more with surround sound to start your project with this setting would be great but for now we're going to stick it to stereo and the sample rate leaving it at 48 gigahertz which shouldn't be a problem also once you've done this and you've set things to what you would like your project to be uh, you know as a guideline because all this really is is a guideline for your whole entire project but it can help you with the rendering especially if you've got one type of media file that is being imported and there is no inconsistencies in uh, format resolution and frame rate then you, all you would have to do is click OK once you've clicked OK, your project has now begun and you can see from the timeline that it is now giving you the space in which you can drag and drop your media ready for editing. To explain the work space right now will be what we're doing in the next video. Um, if you found this video helpful to you, then give me a thumbs up and if you would like more video editing knowledge and Final Cut Pro X knowledge like this, then it's definitely a good idea to subscribe. You've been watching Anthony and Edit's YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. We'll be continuing this and we will have more content for you in terms of video editing and video creations and more cool things coming soon.